All right, so several people sent me a video from Robert Murray Smith on YouTube where he was uh, using a transistor and uh, alpha radiation to generate electricity. Uh, so it was he was just taking a radioactive source directly um, direct a, directly exposing the transistor PN junction to radiation and allegedly producing electricity. I'm going to have to disagree with them on this. Uh, it didn't work. Um, the problem being, let me demonstrate. So here I've got the voltmeter. I've got it hooked up to my transistor. You can see here all I've done is I've cut the case off it. This is a common transistor. I forget which one this was. 4052 maybe. Uh, regardless, I, all I did was I cut off the steel casing to expose the PN junction inside. Now, I had tried this experiment before, and what I had done was I'd used solar panels. The problem is, when you're dealing with alpha radiation, alpha radiation really doesn't have much penetrating power, and so the either the glass on the face of the solar panel or the resin or whatever coating was on it, I, I don't think the alpha particles were penetrating the solar panel at all, and thus they weren't generating electricity. But as you can see up here, so there's quite a bit of uh, like 0.3 volts being generated right now, but watch what happens when I cover it up and block the light. So it's basically acting as a solar panel right now. And this is the problem which uh, Robert actually demonstrated in his video. So he, he acknowledged this. The problem is then he attempted to uh, block the incoming light while exposing it to alpha radiation from his emeris americium. And I don't think he blocked the light. In fact, as he started laughing maniacally, which I loved, uh, you could you could see the the voltages swing because he was actually moving it and uh, the it was letting light in so the voltage was responding accordingly so the voltage he's producing I'm convinced is actually photovoltaic very much like what's going on here like it's actually producing a substantial considering this is just a transistor that's all I've done is I've taken the case off the transistor um, considering it's just a transistor, that is a, that's almost a, that's almost a third of a volt. That's a shocking amount of electricity that it's generating. Okay, so what I do have, though, is a bunch of radiation sources. Uh, so here's some americium, americium. This is what, uh, Robert used in his video. If you know, you know. If you don't know, I'm not going to tell you anymore. But there's my americium, and I got my Geiger counter here, and uh, hopefully you can hear that. So you can hear the background radiation. So now here's the americium. So now, americium is primarily an alpha emitter. There is some gamma in there, I believe. Um, and this Geiger counter, I'm not terribly sure how well it picks up alpha radiation. Um, but you do notice an uptick. So there's the americium. And when I put it on top of the... Uh, the PN junction in the transistor that's now exposed, the moment I block the light, the voltage goes down, but it is not recovering in any way, shape, or form. Matter of fact, if I block the light, you can see that there's all that voltage right there that's being generated is strictly light leakage around my hands. So I don't think there's any alpha generation alpha volt of al alpha voltaics going on um but let's try some other stuff so i got uh these are common these are just uh mantles from a coleman gas light 
So you basically tie this bag around the gas outlet and then you light it on fire and it turns it into a, a, a hard calcium mesh, the ashes. And that encases the, uh, the gas and keeps it lit inside. So you've probably seen these. These, these um, typically off the shelf, the newer ones don't seem to be radioactive, but these ones, the older ones, off the shelf were highly radioactive. In fact, when we were uh, working at the Canada's first nuclear power plant, demolishing it, they just had one of these taped to the Geiger counters for testing. And you can hear why. So here's the background radiation. And so that's how you can check your Geiger counter. So conveniently, it works really, really good for testing with the transistor because I can just ma it's not conductive, so I can just mash it right on the transistor and really block out all the light. And once I do that, you can see that the voltage basically drops to zero. But let's try some other stuff. So this is... Uh, good old Canadian Shield basement rock stuff. Yeah, this is great. So this is uh, the feldspar, which was mined. Um, this came from the JG Gold Quarry in Madawaska, Ontario, not far from here. And uh, I believe this uh, white stuff, the whitish or sort of off whitish stuff, that's the, the, the hot radioactive stuff. But listen to the listen to this. Well, that's not really that radioactive, to be honest. Yeah, it's pretty docile. Regardless. It is emitting radiation, and I can pretty much block most of the light going on in the transistor, but there's still light leakage going on. So, is that radiation voltaic, radio voltaics? Eh, I don't know. I am skeptical. Uh, if I try and block more light, the voltage just drops dramatically, and I'm still getting a lot of light leakage. So let's try this stuff. So this is uh, euxenite. Oh, yes, that's the good stuff. And this is near impossible to block the light because of the shape of the rock, but I'm gonna try anyway. And there's, so that's the most radioactive stuff I've got. And that's just light leakage. That's not radio, radio voltaics. And the last one, which I'll just show you real quick, because I'm proud of this one. This is one of my, part of my collection. So 1945. World's first nuclear bomb was detonated in Alamogordo, New Mexico, and the nuclear heat uh, melted the sand in the desert and fused it into a radioactive green glass. They nicknamed it Trinitite after the Trinity device, which is the name that Oppenheimer gave the world's first nuclear bomb, the Trinity device. This is a piece of that Trinitite glass and uh, you can hear the Geiger counter. Uh, it is just weakly still radioactive, which would be, uh, be 70, 79 years ago. Yeah, like a barely discernible difference barely discernible it's pretty much radioactively dead so i won't even bother experimenting with it this is just more for fun so anyway um i have a lot of very very strong interest in directly producing electricity from 
radiation. And I'd already tried with solar panels, but uh, the one thing that Robert did was directly exposing the PN junction, which I could not do with my solar panels. And here he showed a way you could do it because, uh, again, I won't give off my secrets because I may still be able to use this, but I have a way of getting, well, hundreds of these PN junctions and basically just put them around a radiation source and there you go. You just got a whole, you just stack them. So you get a whole mess of uh, uh, radiovoltaics going on. Um, which I may still use because I can generate high amounts of alpha radiation in particular, um, which is the one I'm aiming for because alpha radiation is kind of like the, the most docile with uh, basically no radioactive waste left behind. Um, anyway, just kind of fun. Thought I'd give us an update.